Hey, it's me and welcome to my channel, The Way What is Truth. Remember to like, subscribe and comment down below. Now, today I'm going to talk about something that a lot of people have spoken about on YouTube. I'm not the only one. Now, I've got my own take on this. Um, and it's about virginity and how to handle being a virgin in this oversexed generation. Because we're living in a world where we have films like The 40-Year-Old Virgin... Uh, the stereotype, it's a rather silly stereotype of like women pointing and laughing uh, at men who are virgins later in life. I myself was a virgin until my mid-30s. I'm not going to go into it in this video, but uh, yeah, uh, I know how it feels to be lonely and how to feel like I'm missing out on life. And it's partly because of this oversexed culture we're living in, the, the film industry, the video game industry and the music industry as well. You only have to look at many of the music videos out there to see how oversexed this world has become and also the film industry. But don't forget, they're trying to sell you something. What I'm trying to encourage everybody to do is to push out the noise of this world and all of the worldly nonsense that's going on out there and just to wear it on your sleeve, be proud of the fact that you're a virgin. Obviously, there are other factors that come into play as well, like... Um, like loneliness and depression which often go hand in hand with being a virgin and generally speaking the longer we're virgins for throughout our lives the more the more likely we are to be lonely depressed and to feel that we're missing out okay so that's a separate issue entirely but actually being a virgin in and of itself is nothing to be ashamed of you know what what do the people that should be ashamed are those who are promiscuous those who were hedonistic those who keep chasing their uh, tails like a dog. Do you know how like a dog chases its tail or like how a dog keeps, re keeps returning back, back to its vomit? You know, the reason why these promiscuous and hedonistic types um, keep living like that is because they're never fulfilled. Okay, they live that kind of lifestyle. There's the swingers. There's people who go after NSAF, no strings attached fun. Those kinds of people... Um, they're not really truly happy. Yeah, they feel happy at the time whilst they're engaged in that sexual activity because it feels great, right, okay? But then afterwards, they feel empty again, so that they keep going back to it. It's like when you drive a car, you know, it keeps going back to the petrol station. It keeps going back to be serviced at the garage. And that's how it is when it comes to these people who live that kind of life. It makes sense to them temporarily whilst they're alive and, and they're healthy and everything. But in the long run, uh, it doesn't do them any good. It does them spiritual damage, emotional damage, all that no string sex they've had. It's just a, uh, it's just not the, the way to live. You know, it's it, it, it's good for short term happiness. This is the best way to describe it. Living a hedonistic, promiscuous life is nothing to be. You should never be envious of those people. You should never be jealous of them. And I tell you why, because it gives a lot of short term happiness, but the long term happiness, it doesn't give. You know, in the long term, these people are going to run out of puff, they're going to grow old, they're going to die, they're going to get diseases and so on and so forth. And, and that's not to mention sexually transmitted disease, which is another great reason not to live that kind of life or anything of the sort, right? And yeah, condoms only save you from roughly 1% of sexually transmitted diseases. It, it's a myth that wearing a condom protects you from all STDs, because that's simply a lie. Unless there's some brand new brand of condom, but I've got no idea about that, somehow stops you from getting any sexually transmitted disease. If so, then tell me down below in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. Uh, but um, as far as I'm aware, you know, what I'm saying is, is true. That is not the way to live. And it goes against common sense. It goes against everything that's right and moral and good in the world. Unfortunately, sometimes even if it's just for short periods of time, people get caught up in that way of life sometimes. Or perhaps we meet people who are living that kind of life, but then we think to ourselves, well, no, well, I can see where you're coming from, but, 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 but I don't want to live like that, you know. But this is how it is in life. We meet all sorts of people. Uh, anyway, I don't want to get too far off topic. Uh, yeah, being a virgin is nothing to be ashamed of. Society will tell you it is. I mean, most sensible level-headed people don't think there's anything wrong with being a virgin in and of itself. But the overall consensus of opinion, when you look at the film industry, the music industry, it gives kind of a skewed view, a kind of a... Uh, sort of like a wonky view 
of what it is to be a virgin and then you get people that are quite judgmental unfortunately from my own experience correct me if i'm wrong but from my experience most women today tend to be rather judgmental when it comes to men who are virgins and it's like a double standard because if you're a woman and you're still a virgin in your mid-20s late 20s even 30s and so on and so forth then that's seen as being like a prize to a lot of men but they don't care as much if anything it's a bonus if a woman hasn't slept around and they've got standards and all the rest of it right and they're trying to save themselves for the right partner but if you're a man and you're in your mid-twenties late twenties and so on and so forth you, you, you know there's a picture starting to form in your mind now <laughs> you know uh, women i think a lot of the time with women they like to feel safe and if you and the longer you're a virgin for let, let, let's say if you're still a virgin in your 30s like the way i or in your 40s and so on and so forth then they think what's wrong with this guy is he introverted does he have anxiety does he smell funny and it goes on and on and on and they think well is, is he a nasty piece of work is, is he one of those incels that, that sounds for involuntary celibate right the likes of Elliot Roger they think all sorts of things is this guy going to be too much for me to handle has he got issues, this guy? You know, they think all sorts of things these days. I'm not saying all women do. A lot of women are quite sensible, broad-minded and open-minded. They say that travel broadens the mind, but even with those kinds of people that are quite broad-minded and sensible and, and, and are not judgmental when it comes to men who are late in life virgins, uh, even those women tend to prefer men who are sexually active, men who have had previous relationships and even men who are currently in relationships uh the vast majority of women find more attractive they call, they, they, they call it the wedding ring effect if a man is desired and wanted by women generally speaking they are more attractive to most women but, but most women are not like that I, I, I mean most women are like that sorry but not all <laughs> that's what i meant to say so yeah a lot of it is nature as well you've only got to look in in a zoo, you know, you've got, you've got to look at apes, right? And like monkeys and chimpanzees. Uh, the, 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 the alpha males, those with, the, the, those with female attention tend to get more attention from other females. It's just nature because we see those apes, well, I'm now referring to humans who are like the equivalent of those apes in the zoo <laughs> who are getting all the female attention, right? Um, women are naturally more attracted to men who are sexually active. That doesn't mean say women don't have a brain and they don't look at other things like character and personality and substance of an individual as well. It's not all about sex, 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 obviously. But generally speaking, unfortunately, this is just hand on heart. This is from what I've seen in this world. Most women, this isn't me talking bad about women because a lot of, well, it's like a double standard, like I said before, because men don't tend to look at this so much. They don't tend to think, oh, right, that, that woman get, gets lots and lots of sex. That, that woman has had loads of relationships and is in a relationship right now. Therefore, I find her more attractive. That's not the way men think. I know, I can tell you, for, 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 for me as a man, I know how men think. They don't think like that. Whilst women do, unfortunately. This doesn't go for all women, but most women do judge a man by how many relationships they've had. But by the time a man's reached... The age of 25 they expect that they expect the man to have had at least maybe one or two relationships by then uh, by the time they've hit 35 they might expect them again maybe one or two relationships that last for varied amounts of time uh by the hard time they've hit 40 they usually expect a man to have had at least three or four relationships that's just the way it is man unfortunately that's the way it is and according to what I read on the internet and from my own common sense, any more than five relationships in a lifetime is abnormal, as in it's not healthy. Any more than five relationships is not healthy. Trust me on this one, because of the emotional damage it, 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 that, that, that it does to you, the, 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 the spiritual damage it, it does to people. Because being in relationships that don't work out, take it out of you. They take it out of you. They really do. They make you depressed. They make you feel like you don't want to be here anymore. So less is more when it comes to relationships. Never forget that. Uh, yeah. And of course, studies have been carried out and it's a well-known fact that people that wait until they find the right one and then commit to that person are more likely to stay with them rather than people who became sexually active when, when they were young 
those relationships later on in life. Uh, this doesn't always apply, but generally speaking, the less relationships we've had and the more we've waited until we find the right one, the better and the, the longer lasting those relationships are going to be. Now, yeah, there's a couple of other things I'd like to mention, and it's that I don't think that people end up virgins in their 20s and 30s and, 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 and beyond just because we haven't mixed enough. That's not always the case. There's men out there, and now, now from my experience, I'm not sure how many women are late in life virgins or are virgins at an age that they wouldn't like to be a virgin at. But I think there's more men. I mean, let's face the facts here, right? Men are more likely to end up late in life virgins than women. If I'm wrong, shoot me down in flames in the comments section down below. But as far as I'm aware, it's the men that struggle. If a woman wants to lose their virginity, all they've got to do is go out there and... I mean, most women, unless it's a woman who's got self-esteem issues or perhaps they don't consider themselves attractive or, or perhaps they suffer from anxiety or something, social anxiety. Some people have got poor social skills. But, but generally speaking, women, if they want to lose their virginity, they can easily. All they've got to do is let a member of the opposite of sex know that they're up for it. They want a bit of fun. Whether it's at senior school, college, nightclubs, university, you name it. Wherever they're mixing with other members of the opposite sex, chances are, if there's a man about who's single and a woman comes on and says, oh, um, I like you, I fancy you, you want a bit of fun, perhaps. You know, it's so easy for a woman to lose their virginity in comparison to men anyway. I'm not saying it's always easy for all women. I'm saying that compared to men, it could be well it is. I know from years and years of experience. Um, anyway, uh, enough about all. Uh, losing your virginity as soon as possible in, in life isn't what it's about. That's how it usually happens. I mean, between the age of 16 and 20, within the Western Hemisphere, throughout the whole of Europe, especially within the Western Hemisphere, as I said, most people lose their V-card between the age of 16 and 20. But don't worry if you're not most people. Be proud of it. Be proud that, for example, be proud that you're not hedonistic, promiscuous. I'm not saying that all people that lose their V-card between the age of 16 and 20 Oh, hedonistic or promiscuous. I'm just saying that. Be proud that you haven't because you, you, you were like a unicorn. You know, it's so unusual to find a virgin, even in their early 20s these days. It's, re it's really uncommon. It, it's really uncommon. By the age of 23, 24, it's uncommon to still be a virgin. I think that's the kind of world we're living in now. And you best believe that the vast majority of people who lose their V-card do it to gain experience, they do it for fun, they do it because they may have feelings for someone, but more often than not, uh, they usually, they, more often than not, the person that they lose their virginity to is not the one they stay with for life, and it's usually with the wrong person at the wrong time for the wrong reasons. I hate to say it, but it's just the truth, okay, it really is the truth. <laughs> It may sound a bit harsh and a bit black and white saying that, says, oh, 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 what does this person, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about, but I do. I do, because we weren't created just to have sex with whoever we want, whenever we want. That's just sinful pride. That's just us saying our bodies belong to our own. God's got nothing to do with it whatsoever. Uh, and we can do what we want, when we want. We're, we're our own people and we shouldn't take any advice or wis age old wisdom or experience into consideration whatsoever. Okay, that, that, that's where the vast majority of the world is coming from. And they laugh at people that have faith in God, who call themselves Christians. They just think, live and let live. If a relationship works, it works. If it don't, it don't. I mean, what's the big deal? But uh, as Christians, at least, we're supposed to live principled lives. We're supposed to live by guidelines. Uh, yeah, so... I'm telling you, there's a lot of people by the time they've hit their 50s and 60s and 70s, that even though they didn't think about, about what types like me were saying at the time, they think about it years later and they realise, yeah, he's right. You know, too many relationships is no good. But often those people are driven to too many relationships because of loneliness. Because they're trying to settle, most people do try and settle down with someone. Most people do. It's not always easy for all of us to find someone, to find Mr. Right or Mrs. Right or whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, so being a virgin, I'm sorry if I've drifted too far off topic, but I'm just trying to expand on this conversation I'm having now with my viewers. Definitely comment down below. I'd love to hear about anyone's experiences about being a virgin. And 
um, and the loneliness and feelings of missing out that you may be experiencing, but you've got to push out the film industry, you've got to push out the, the music industry and the video game industry. That's going to feed you lies and rubbish, okay? You may have friends and family that, that tease you and, and say that you're missing out on life, this, that and the other. And I'm not going to lie, uh, when people are in relationships that they're happy with, they do generally tend to be happier than people that are single. They just are, because being lonely is it does as much damage to people, potentially, as smoking 15 to 20 cigarettes a day. That's, how, that's what loneliness can do to people. And I've experienced it. Most of my life I've been lonely. You know, all the way up until my mid-30s I was lonely. I'm 35 now. So I know what I'm talking about. I've seen this world. I've seen the mistakes that people make. Uh, I've seen people that are in relationships and they think that they're not doing anything wrong, really, morally speaking, but they are, and they'll probably come to realise it maybe 10, 15, 20 years from now. But, but I'm no one's judge. I can't judge anybody. Only Jesus is the judge of mankind, right? So, yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. I definitely want to hear about anyone's experiences feeling inadequate or insecure. I mean, some, I mean, not everyone feels bad about being a virgin, but generally speaking, if we're a virgin from our early 20s onwards, we start to think about things. Some people take pride in being a virgin and they think, oh, I'm going to wait for the right person. Or some people even make out. They're not bothered about relationships. But they just think whenever, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. A lot of people have that attitude. They're just not that fussed. But most people, from my experience, including from how I felt as, as a late-in-life virgin up until relatively recently, when I lost it, um, it's tough. It's tough because we're living in a world where most people are sexually active most of the time. And I'll just encourage everyone to find a friend, a family member, or someone they can trust. Even if it's just me in this video, comment down below and talk to me, chat to me about how you feel about your life, about what's going on. Perhaps you're someone who isn't a virgin, who lost it, but still is lonely. Perhaps you're someone who had one relationship, a one-off, and then couldn't find anyone else. I mean, you, I mean, you could literally be anyone right now watching this video. This video is not just for virgins, but primarily it was... I want to help as many people as possible with my YouTube channel with these different life problems and different life issues. Now that's what I'm doing at the moment, right? And uh, I'm not posting so much on Facebook at the moment because I'm busier than I was, okay? Uh, so yeah. Um, I think I better end the video now. Let me just have a few moments to myself in case I've forgotten something. So excuse me if I go a bit quiet or a bit funny or something. I'm just trying to think. I don't like to miss anything out, and I'm well aware that this video has gone on for longer than I wanted it to, but that's usually the case, because I've got the gift of the gab. When I get going, I get going. Anyway, let me think. Yeah, We should never compare ourselves to anybody else. This is something that I wanted to mention in my previous video to this. We should never compare ourselves to other people. So if we've got friends that are sexually active doing this, that, and we realise that they're doing what they're doing, and we're doing what we're doing. But to compare ourselves to other people, and to be envious of other people, to be jealous is no good. Because we're all uniquely valuable. We're all unique. Okay, we're all, no one is better than anyone else, however they live their lives, that's it. And of course, we should never be judgmental of how other people live. We may have friends, family that are living promiscuous, hedonistic lives, or perhaps we know family members that have never been single. They've always had sex, they've always had relationships, they've always been loved, or whatever. We may feel very cynical at times. I think, well, it's all well and good for these people, but, but, but what about us? What, what about us lonely virgins? I know exactly where you're coming from, because I felt that most of my days. Most of my days I felt that way. I really, really have. So I'd love to hear from anyone else who's been through what I've been through. Um, what else did I want to mention? Um... Yeah, promiscuity and hedonism, the way of this world, the way this world's heading, the world thinks life is all about pleasure. I'm not saying that pleasure doesn't make people happy because it does. And relationships, people that are in happy relationships are generally happier than single people. And women, yeah, unfortunately, most women are more attracted to men who are in relationships and who are sexually active rather than men who have never done anything with anyone and men who have never had a relationship with anyone. I mean, I know a guy... He's not actually a member of my family, but I'm not going to say who he is, but he's a, he's a guy. 
I'm not going to tell you his name, but he's 60 years old. He's just over 60, actually. He's over 60. And he's been a lifelong virgin, this guy. And he's someone who my dad knows. And that's all I'm going to say. He's someone who my dad knows. And yeah, so I know how some people can end up. And it's no joke. If you know someone who's a later in life virgin, someone who's lonely and depressed or whatever, then pray for them, talk to them, reach out to them and try and help those people because it's no joke. It has heavy emotional, it does heavy emotional damage. It has psychological effects on people. Thankfully, my life turned around relatively recently and uh, things are better for me now. But uh, it wasn't like that before. I've... I've been through stuff that you don't want to know about. Trust me, I have. Anyway, um, see you on the next one. Bye-bye and take care.